get this myrrh and stuff together, let's go down to what's left of Jesus. When Mary got down to the tomb, it was a mess. People pay good money to make sure that tombs are decorated and looking nice. It was an absolute mess. The stone had been rolled away. It was disruption at the tomb. He was not there. He was not there. And I will take this liberty in assuming she was angry because the Bible doesn't tell me how she went down, but it tells me how she came back. She was running when she came back because there are some things in your life that will make you run. There are certain things that will happen in your life that make you pick up the pace, that, that slap you out of your stupor and say, this ain't no time to cry. And you feel like I can't even have good grief without the world going crazy. I can't even have this moment without people. Somebody has stolen Jesus, she thought. They've taken away my Lord, she said, and I know not where they took him. The master of miracles. Don't you remember he had cast demons of her? He changed my life, and they've taken away my master. And she said, I've got to go get some help. And she goes running tell and to find Peter and the other disciple. You remember Peter and the other disciple. We've heard those phrases before. We, 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 we hear about Peter and how Jesus had called him and strengthened him and set him apart and taught him to be the rock that his name says that he is and taught him to be unrelenting up under pressure and was teaching him all kinds of things about life. She, she, she comes to get Peter and the other disciple running to the tomb to find him, running to the last seen location of Jesus. As soon as Mary could get to, get to Peter, she was going to tell them, somebody's taken away the Lord. And, and walking with him is no longer what I expected. As grieved as I am by him passing away, I'm more upset by him not being there because now life has handed me something that I didn't expect. I'm wondering this morning if there's anybody here that life has handed you something that you didn't expect. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> the one thing I can tell you for sure is that nothing is for sure. <laughs> That's the one thing I can tell you to count on is don't count on anything. <laughs> That, that, that life will often disrupt what you expected. That just as soon as you have it down in a nice neat little box of how you think it's gonna go, and that when I walk down here, this is what is going to happen, by the time you get there, it will never be what you expected it to be. So you gotta get used to being a little disappointed. You gotta get used to being a little bit shocked. You got to get used to walking in the situations and being flexible and adjustable. Because if you are not flexible, you cannot survive. God did not promise you that by the time you got to where you was trying to go, it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that by the time you got the house you were trying to get, it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that by the time you found your significant other, that it would be what you thought it would be. God did not promise you that if you joined this church or that church, that it would be what you thought it would be. But I came to tell you this morning that our God is a God of the unexpected. Oh my God, I feel a shout. 
I'm going to say it again. Our God is a God of the unexpected. So just because life has shocked you doesn't mean it's shocked God. Nothing takes God by surprise. He already knows what's going on in every corner of your life. And he sent me here to tell you, don't worry about it. I got you covered.